Hi everyone! Today I'm going to share with you some answering techniques for directed writing in SPM English 1119. In this slide also, I'm going to focus on how to get full marks for format and content. After watching this presentation, I'm pretty sure that you'll be more confident in your writing no matter how proficient or how weak your language is. Everyone can get full marks for format and content. Let's have a look at one sample question, the trial paper from Sabah 2019. This is how the question looks like. The title, 35 marks, time suggested 45 minutes. This is an instruction. In this section, all the content points are given. Here are some reminders for you to take note on when you write. And here, it also informs you the allocation of marks. Before we start writing, the first thing you need to know about directed writing is the allocation of marks. Remember, F, C, L. F is format, C is content, and L is language. Format is three marks. Content is 12 marks, language is 20 marks, make up a total of 35 marks. Out of these three, which one do you think you can get full marks? Yes, of course the format. You can memorize the format. So there's no excuse for not getting a full marks for it. There's one more that you can get full marks. What do you think? Content or language? Yes, it's the content. All the 12 content points are already given to you in the question. But in the recent few years, that a few points are omitted, so you are required to give your own ideas. But there's not many, only 3 to 4 points. So I want all of you to set a target for yourself. For directed writing, you must aim to get full marks for format and content. The first very important step is to read the instruction. Where is the instruction? Yes, this is the instruction. It's a question that sets a scenario for the writing. It's very important to read the instruction because it can help you in your writing. Let me show you how. This is the instruction for this question. Your teacher is organizing a seminar workshop for Form 5 school leavers to prepare them for life's challenges. She has suggested two venues and she has asked you to write a talk to persuade your classmates to choose one of the venues. Do you notice a word in the instruction that's especially bolded? Yes, it's the word talk. Let's highlight it. This tells you the format of your writing. There are only five types of format tested in SPM. They are article, speech or talk, report, informal letter and formal letter. Every time in SPM, it's sure the format of the writing will be bolded in the instruction. So you don't have to think of what format you have to use for your essay. It's already given to you in the instruction itself and it's especially highlighted for you. So, no excuse for a wrong format. Okay, so what's the next thing that the instruction can help you? Yes, it gives you the main idea or the general contents of your essay. So, from here, you can decide what's the topic of your writing if the format requires you to state the topic by article or report. But this is a talk. So the instruction gives you information on either your topic or the purpose of your talk. So in this question, what's the purpose of your talk? Which word gives you a hint on the purpose? It's the word to. Let's circle the word. The word to tells you what follows it is the purpose of your talk. That is... Persuade your classmates to choose one of the venues. Later, I will tell you further how to do this. 
other than this, there is one more function for the instruction. One of the most common questions students ask when they are writing an essay is, Teacher, how to start? Here you go. Look at the instruction. It will give you ideas how to start your essay. Of course, if you are good in your language or you have your own creative ideas to start, go ahead. But chances are, many students are very nervous during the exam. Their minds are blank. They can't think of anything. Oh no, what am I supposed to do? Don't worry. The simplest way to start your writing, that is, copy the instruction. Yes, copy. But don't copy 100%. You have to change certain words. What are the words you need to change? The pronouns and the persons mentioned in the instructions. Let's find out these words first. Your teacher is organizing a seminar workshop for Form 5 school leavers to prepare them for life's challenges. She has suggested two venues and she has asked you to write a talk to persuade your classmates to choose one of the venues. Now we have already underlined all the pronouns and persons mentioned in the instruction. Now you need to be clear who is talking and who is listening and who is only mentioned but is not listening. So in this question, who is talking? Yes, you. That's the first person. So all the second person pronouns should be changed to first person. You change to I or me. Your change to my or our. Who is listening? Your classmates. So, your classmates change to you. Who is being mentioned but not listening? Teacher. This is the third person, so can remain unchanged. So, the instruction goes like this. Our teacher, or you give her a name, Madam Wong, is organizing a seminar workshop for Form 5 school leavers or you change Form 5 school leavers to us because it includes you, yourself, to prepare us from life's challenges. She has suggested two venues and she has asked me to persuade you to choose one of the venues. You see, this is very easy. This is the easiest way to start your essay. But of course, like I said just now, if you have more creative ideas, definitely you can start in a more interesting way. What I'm sharing here is the easiest way in case you are nervous during the exam or you have no idea, then this method may come to a rescue for you. Now, let's go back to the format of this question. Talk. So, what's the format of a talk? There are three points you need to remember. One, two, three. What's number one? Greeting. Good morning. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, my dear friends. There are many ways you can greet, but just don't write good night. Yeah. Alright, what's number two? purpose or topic. Today I'm going to talk about the purpose of my talk today is okay and lastly after you have stated the purpose of your talk you start talking then when you finish talking what are you supposed to say? Yes thank you thank you for listening or if you want to make your writing longer you can write Thank you very much to everyone for spending your precious time and lending me your attentive ears. Very simple, right? If you write these three in your talk, you are already entitled for three marks for your format. Remember, just now you have set your target to get full marks for format. See, you have achieved it. Now, let's memorize the format together without looking at the slide. 
Tell me what's number one, number two, number three. Okay, very good. Let's move on. Okay, so just now we have mentioned the instruction helps you to decide what's the topic or the purpose of your talk. So in this question, the word to tells you what follows it is the purpose of your talk. That is, persuade your classmates to choose one of the venues. So examples, today I want to talk about the two venues. Or you can also write, today we need to discuss about these two venues and make a decision. Okay, this is a good, very good paraphrase. Or very straightforward example. The purpose of my talk today is to persuade you to choose one of the venues. Now we are going to go through the content. I have edited some of the content points of the original question to suit the current SPM format. Do you remember how many marks are allocated to content? Yes, 12 marks. In SPM, one content point equals to one mark. That means there must be 12 content points. Let's count if there are 12 content points in the question. Content 1, I mark as C1. And content 2, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, C9, C10, C11, and C12. All together, 12 content points. Notice that C6 and C12 require you to give your own ideas on the meals while the other 10 content points are all given to you. As long as you mention all these 12 points in your writing, you get full marks for your content. Even without any elaboration or any explanation or any example, you still can get full marks. Do you understand? Isn't it simple? I repeat. I have to repeat because it's very important. Bear in mind, by just mentioning all the content points given, even without any elaboration, even though your sentence is only a very simple sentence, you still can get full marks. I repeat, full marks for your content. Clear? However, credits go to your language part if you are able to elaborate or give examples to your points. And especially if you aim for an a for your SPM English, you must elaborate and give examples for each of the content points. But before we talk about how to do elaboration, there is one thing we need to discuss first. Let me ask you, do you remember how much time is suggested for you to complete this section? When I say to complete, it is not only finish writing the essay. It includes time before you start writing, like when you start reading the question, you need some time to understand the question, to think of ideas, to organize your thoughts. And after finish writing, you need to go through your essay again once or twice to check through your grammar, spelling and ideas and edit your sentences. All this. How much time do you have to complete all this? Only 45 minutes. Yes, only 45 minutes. What can you do in 45 minutes? Basically, you don't have much time to think. That's why most of the content points are already given to you. You just use it. Do you think you have time to write a long paragraph to elaborate each of the points? This is the first part of the paper. And many students are very ambitious or very enthusiastic to write a 1,000 words essay. But when you finish writing this essay, oh no, only then you realize you have left no time for your section B, which you need more time to brainstorm ideas and write. So my suggestion is you can use five minutes to go through the question and brainstorm ideas 
thirty minutes to write. Here, just write. Not much thinking time for you. Don't worry about grammar and spelling. Don't correct your sentences. Don't bother if this is correct or that is wrong. Just write whatever that come across your mind. After finish writing, then only you check through your writing, and only now you edit your language. So in exam, time management is very very important. So always set a timer whenever you are doing your writing assignment. Train yourself to complete the whole directed writing task in forty five minutes. The more you practice, the faster you can write. So, in order to save time in this section, my suggestion is this: for each content, you only need to write one more sentence to elaborate it, or give one example. That's enough. Don't have to be too long. One content, one elaboration, or one example. Bear in mind. Your elaboration does not give you any marks for your content. No matter how long you elaborate on one point, you only can get one mark for each content. Even you don't elaborate it at all, you are still entitled to get one mark. Okay, now let's go through a few content points to illustrate this. Let's look at C one. C one is ten kilometers, so we make a sentence for it. The distance from school to the city boutique hotel is ten kilometers. Take note here: you don't make any elaboration or give any example. You only write one sentence that mentions your C one. Do you get your mark for C C one? Yes, you get. One mark. Now we write one more sentence, just one sentence to elaborate it. It is very near to our school, so it is very convenient for most of us to get there. How many marks do you get for contents here? Two marks. Well, it's a very good elaboration. I think it deserves ten marks. Will you get any extra mark for content if your elaboration is very good? No, you won't get any extra mark for your C one. You still get one mark only, only one mark. Some students ask, "Can I write more than one content points in one sentence?" Yes, as long as it makes sense. And can you write the content in different order? Yes, but bear in mind if you jumble up the order of the content points, chances are you may miss out some points if you are careless or nervous or when you are running out of time. So, if you want to change the order of the content, make sure you double check after you finish writing. Let's try this with C three, C four, C nine, and C ten. The package of the City Boutique Hotel is inclusive of a conference room and the speakers' fees, but I prefer the beach resort, which offers air-conditioned indoor space with equipment and bus fees. In these two sentences, I make comparison between the two venues, so I have skipped C five to C eight, and each sentence. I've written two content points. Here, I didn't do any elaboration of these points. How many marks do I get here? Yes, four marks. Last thing about content: don't ever forget to write your own ideas. Don't be panicked with this. Some students start to get panicked when they are asked to give their own ideas. Don't worry. As long as your idea makes sense, it can be accepted even if it's the simplest idea. Just a simple idea will do. Your creativity doesn't give you any extra bonus on your content point. For example, 
The City Boutique Hotel offers free meals a day. Isn't it simple? Do you deserve to get one mark for C6? Yes, definitely. Let's look at C12. What you can't miss in this resort is its appetizing, all-inclusive buffet breakfast, ranging from local delicacies to international favorites, which tantalizes your taste buds to the fullest sensation. Wow, it makes me so hungry when I'm reading it. Hmm, I think it deserves 20 marks. How many marks for C12? Yes one mark. However, like I mentioned before, credits go to your language. Next, don't forget to use linkers to connect your content points. Here are some examples of linkers you can use. Here, I would like to emphasize on linkers to introduce new points. If possible, Please memorize these linkers as they are extremely helpful in writing. What to do if you don't understand the meaning of some content points or you don't even understand a single word of the question, not even one word? What should you do? Some students say, what can I do? Just close the paper and sleep now. No, no, no. Let me tell you a good news. Even if you don't understand a single word of English, if you follow my tips, you still can get full marks for your formats and contents. And chances are, you still can pass. How? Very simple. Like I say, just write one sentence for each content point. Use linkers before the content points. If you don't understand the meaning of the content points, just don't do the elaboration. You still can get marks, full marks for content. Let me show you an example. This essay fits the minimum requirements of director writing. Let's try to mark and see how many marks she could get for format and content. Let's look at format first. Let's revise. What's the format for a talk? Number one, greeting. Does it have a greeting? Yes. Good morning. F1. Number two, purpose of writing. I want to talk to persuade my classmate to choose one of the venues. Is this the purpose? Yes, you see here, she changes your classmate to my classmate. Even though it sounds a bit awkward, it still serves its purpose. So, she got one mark for her F2. What's F3? Thank you. So for Matt, F, she gets full marks, three marks. Now, let's continue reading to check on her content. A city boutique hotel. You see, this is not a complete sentence, but doesn't matter. Okay, let's continue. Firstly, Distance from school is 10 km. This is C1. Cost is 200. C2. Besides that, inclusive of conference room and speaker's fees. You see, this is not a complete sentence. But she get marks for C3 and C4. Other than that, transport is participants own transport. C5. Okay. Now, C6 requires us to write own idea. This student has written, meals is breakfast. This sentence is grammatically wrong and it doesn't sound quite right. But we can still see that she understands the meaning of the word meals refer to food served at certain time of the day. 
so we can interpret this sentence as the hotel served breakfast. So she is entitled to get her marks for C6. Let's move on to the next paragraph. A beach resort. Okay, again, this sentence is not complete, but doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the content points. Okay, next sentence. Distance from school is 80 kilometers. This is C7. First of all, the cost is 250 C8. You see, in this sentence, she didn't use the linker appropriately. However, the meaning of the content comes through. So she still can get her C8. Furthermore, inclusive of air conditioned indoor space and equipment and bus fee. C9 and C10. Moreover, transport is a chartered air conditioned bus. C11. Finally, meals is free. C12. You see, in C12, her sentence is not right, but still her meaning comes true. So she can get one mark for C12. So how many marks she gets for content? Yes, four marks. You see, she didn't make any elaboration or give any example at all. Her sentences are all very simple and some are even grammatically wrong. She shows effort in using linkers, though some are not used appropriately. Yet, the meaning of each content points come true. So, she's still entitled to get full marks for format and content, despite a very low marks for language. However, can she pass? Yes, definitely. Lastly, let me sum up a few important answering techniques that I have shared. Remember, number one, memorize the format. Number two, make use of the instruction of the question to write an introduction so it saves your time. Next, one content, one elaboration or one example. Don't forget to use all the points given and use linkers whenever it's necessary. Lastly, time yourself while writing. Now, I believe you have a clearer idea about directed writing. Try out these tips while practicing your writing with different questions. Thank you very much for watching. All the best and good luck in your SPM.